In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to corporations. First question, income earned per share is A, dividends, B, earnings per share, C, amount owed to owners, D, shareholder payable, E, book value per share. So we'll go through this again using the process of elimination to narrow this down. Income earned per share, A, dividends. So income earned per share, now you might think it's dividends because I mean if we got income from the corporation then you would think they would, they would pay that to the to the owners like with a dividend so maybe it will keep dividend for now and then B says earnings per share which kind of sounds reasonable since it says income earned per share earnings per share sounds kind of reasonable I'll keep that for now I like the term if I don't know what it is it sounds like the right thing C says amount owned owed to the owners income earned per share yeah, it's, I mean the, the whole income is, is owed to the owners in a way but uh, it doesn't sound quite termed right to me amount owed owed to the owners uh, not uh, D so I'm gonna cross that out D says shareholder payable and um, again we might we might say it sounds that's similar to C amount owed to the owners or shareholder payable uh, but that sounds like a liability and the uh, you know a shareholder payable you know if it's owed to the owner we would typically think that would be some kind of equity maybe and so that doesn't really sound like a thing to me uh, it sounds like a made-up thing so I'm gonna cross that out I don't think that's it E says book value per share uh, and that again it doesn't really sound income earning earned per share book value per share doesn't doesn't quite sound right. I'm going to cross that out and leave it with A or B. Go through this again. Income earned per share is either A or B, either dividends or earnings per share. And income earned per share sounds most like B. B sounds just like the same kind of term, earnings per share, income per share. So I'm going to say it's B. Dividends is not it because although earnings per share is basically taking our kind of net income and dividing it by the owners, shareholders, shares, it doesn't necessarily mean that the company is going to pay the dividends, which is a, which could be a common misconception. Like if we think that, you know, we can calculate the earnings per share and think we're going to get paid the earnings per share. Not necessarily the case because the corporation could then keep the earnings per share in order to generate more revenue in the future. So final answer, income earned per share B, earnings per share. Next question, retained earnings, A, accumulation of earnings less dividends for the life of the corporation, B, represents total equity for a corporation, C, represents the owner initial investment for a corporation, D, does not change over time, or E, does uh, goes up when dividends are declared. So we'll go through this again using the process of elimination to narrow down the options. Retained earnings. A. Accumulation of earnings less dividends for the life of the corporation. That sounds pretty close. Retained earnings is going to be the earnings less what's been given out in dividends. So I'm going to keep that for now. B says represents total equity for the corporation. Eh, it's in the equity section, so I might keep that. I'll keep that for now. C says, represents the owner initial investment for the corporation. Um, that doesn't sound right. I mean, it represents the initial investment because that's what about common stock, right? The common stock is the initial investment. So note that B and C might cancel each other out. And we might say, hmm, rep B says represents total equity for the corporation, meaning assets minus liabilities is total equity represented by one number retained earnings and then C says represents the owner initial investment for the corporation which would indicate that there's more than one component to re to the equity section uh, so maybe we can eliminate those two they don't they both don't sound quite right so I'm gonna say that both of those don't sound right we'll eliminate those D says does not change over time 
Um, that doesn't sound right. Retained earnings is, you know, most accounts change over time. So I don't think that's it. And then E says goes up when dividends are declared. And, you know, it does something when dividends happen, right? So we'll keep that for now. So we'll go through this again. Retained earnings is either A or E, either accumulation of earnings less dividends for the life of the corporation or E goes up when dividends are declared. So of those two, uh, we can think of this and say, hmm, you know, dividend retained earnings does kind of represent the earnings of the corporation and it would something would happen to it if dividends were going out of the corporation, but it would go down, you would think, right? Because it's the earnings of the corporation and then if we give a dividend, it would go down. So it's not E and we're left with basically A here. Also, A is going to be the longest answer. And oftentimes, if you see a long, detailed kind of answer that's hedging all of its bets, being very lawyer-like in order to, to say exactly what is correct, not missing anything, then that might be more you know likely the answer than other types of answers. And uh, this is the most correct answer to note that th there may be other, there could be like a... Um, there could be something like a stock dividend or something that may affect uh, retained earnings. But anyways, A looks like the most correct answer. So we'll go through this uh, last final answer. Retained earnings. A. Accumulation of earnings less dividends for the life of the corporation. <laughs> Next question. Changes in retained earnings are shown on A. Statement of cash flows. B. Balance sheet. C. Statement of stockholders' equity. D. Income statement or E. Statement of owners' equity. We'll go through this again using the process of elimination, narrowing this down. Changes in retained earnings are shown on A. Statement of cash flows. That doesn't sound right. That's going to be the cash flow statement. B. The balance sheet. Now, the balance sheet uh, does have retained earnings you know, on it. On its balance sheet is assets, liabilities, and the equity section. But usually the equity section is kind of like condensed and just shows the, the uh, end result, not really the change there. So I'm going to say, nah. C says statement of stockholders' equity, which sounds kind of reasonable. You would think that uh, if there was a change to be shown, it would be on something called the statement of stockholders' equity. So I'll keep that. Income, uh, D says income statement. And that's going to show a change, but it's going to show the change in net income. That's kind of part of the change for stockholders, you know, the change in retained earnings. But it's not the only component because there could be dividends as well. So that's really not showing the beginning and ending format. It just shows, you know, one component that will be included in the change. And then E says statement of owner's equity. And, you know, the, the owners are the stockholders, so that might sound reasonable. I'll keep that for now. Go through this again. Changes in retained earnings are shown on either A or E, either statement of stockholders equity or statement of owners equity. And of those two, the, the stockholders equity sounds more correct because uh, the owners equity is what we would call it if it was a sole proprietor owned by the owner. But uh, this time they're stockholders, so we'll call it stockholders equity. Same type of idea, same concept in terms of a statement referring to the beginning the change ending value in equity name changes based on type of entity final answer changes in retained earnings are shown on c statement of stockholders equity